In this video, you're going to learn how to use the technique of suction filtration. When working with different chemicals, solid precipitates can sometimes form in a liquid called a supernatant. In most cases, you only want one of the two, either the liquid or the solid, so being able to separate them is key. The technique most common for this is suction filtration. To do this, a partial vacuum is formed and special equipment is used. This draws the liquid through the funnel into the flask, but leaves the solid behind. Before you begin, it's important to make sure that all of your filtration equipment is very clean. You also need to make sure that the glassware doesn't have any damage. If it's damaged at all, a crack, a scratch, anything, it can cause fragile look positions on the glass, and when the vacuum begins, it can cause the entire glassware to shatter, which can be very dangerous. So make sure it's completely undamaged before you begin. Once you have your thoroughly cleaned and undamaged flask, you can attach it to a retort stand. This helps to prevent it from toppling over later on. You can use an adjustable clamp like I have or a ring clamp. Make sure it's tightly fastened. The type of filter you'll want to use depends on the volume of solution you need to filter. I'll be using a Buckner funnel, but there's also smaller ones which are referred to as Hirsch funnels. Make sure you choose the right size for the job. You'll also want to make sure that your funnel fits securely with a rubber stopper, stopper into the top of your flask. The next step is to get a filter paper large enough to cover all of the holes in the bottom of the funnel. There's many different kinds of filter papers, so make sure you're using the right one for your application. The last step is to moisten your filter paper with a small amount of solvent. Doing this helps it to adhere to the bottom of the funnel and prevents solid from leaking underneath the filter paper. You'll now need to attach the aspirator to your funnel. Each of the sinks in the lab will be set up with one of these. There should be a hose coming out of the side of the faucet as well as the bottom. Begin by turning on the water. You should be able to feel the suction coming out the end of the hose. Now gently attach this to the side arm of your funnel. Do this carefully because the side arm is delicate and can break. You'll want to make sure that the hose draining down into the sink is equipped with something to keep the hose from spraying out, such as a towel or a clamp. Now that everything is set up, you can begin. Start by double checking that your filter paper is secure, and now you can begin pouring your solution into the funnel. It's best to do this by pouring down a stirring rod to prevent splashing. If your supernatant and your solids are well separated like mine are, do your best to keep them separated. This will help the liquid to drain faster. In some cases, you'll have large quantities of supernatant, and it may overfill the funnel. It's best to do this in small alicots rather than all at once. If after you've drained the majority of your supernatant, you find that you have large quantities of your solid remaining in the bottom, the best way to handle it is to scrape it out with the rubber policeman on the bottom of your stirring rod. Do this until all of your solid has made its way into the funnel. The objective is to separate the solid from the supernatant as completely as possible. In some cases this is very easy, but for some solids it may be helpful to press down on the solids with the ends of your rubber spatula. This helps to squeeze out the remaining liquid. Be careful when you're doing this so not to tear the filter paper. Once all of your supernatant has been pulled through, it's important to rinse your solids. To do this, you're going to use some cold solvent. I put mine in an ice bath. First, remove the sidearm hose to stop the suction. Then pour a small amount of your cold solvent onto the solids. Reattach the sidearm hose to let the supernatant filter out with the remaining solvent. Repeat this two more times to thoroughly clean your solid. When you finished filtering, remove the hose from the sidearm and then turn the water off. It's important to do this in this order because if you turn the water off first, some of the water can wash back into the sidearm and into your flask, contaminating your supernatant. If you were looking to collect your supernatant, it's now ready for further analysis. But if you're looking to collect your solids, you'll need to remove it from the funnel and filter paper. To do this, remove the funnel from the top of the flask then scoop out as much of your solids as possible onto a watch glass or into another receiving vessel. You can do this by either using your rubber policeman or by using a scoopula.
For large amounts of solids, the rubber stopper works best, but to get along the edges, use your scoopula. While doing this, you'll want to be careful not to rip your filter paper. You can remove the filter paper gently from the funnel, scrape the remaining solids onto the watch glass. Another good tip when doing this is to do it over a paper. This is because if solid has spilled off of your watch glass, you can recollect it without the bench top contaminating it. Using the suction filtration technique, your solid and liquid components of your sample can be successfully separated.